I wanted to answer this question that I get a lot of, even from professional developers that have been in the field for years. So I want to tackle this question really quickly right now. Why are there so many programming languages? Why can't we just have one language that does everything and everybody's happy and we don't have to worry about learning so many programming languages? And here's the thing. In your career, you don't need to know five, ten, eight languages. No, you can be a really successful developer, programmer with just one language, just finding that speciality of yours. And programming languages like Python, Java and JavaScript offer a lot of opportunities where you don't need to learn another language. But why are there so many languages? If we go to Wikipedia, these are the list of programming languages. And if you're looking through here, you should be intimidated because there's no way in your lifetime you're going to learn all of these. And, well, you won't. Most likely, you're going to learn one, two, maybe three languages in your entire lifespan or career as a programmer. And different programming languages are good for different things. Just like we have different tools to, let's say, build a house. You can't just build a house with a hammer. You need different tools that are good at different things to assemble what you want. So it's impossible to build one ultimate language when we have so many applications, so many mobile phones, so many computers, so many devices like cameras. So you have low level languages that we've talked about, like assembly code or C. And then we have higher level languages like Python and JavaScript. Now, here's the thing. Python is usually slower than languages like C++ or C Sharp or even Java. And we don't need to get into technical details here, but I do want to tell you about a trade-off. You see, you don't really want to write Python code for low-level systems and hardware interactions. If you're taking this course, well, you're probably not even interested in that field. You see, Python, although slower than some languages, is good at one thing and does this really, really well. That is developer productivity. Because Python is so easy to learn, or at least is very similar to the English language, it's become really, really popular for developers to be productive and write code really, really fast in less lines than something like C. So a print hello world, for example, in Python would take, well, just one line. But all languages have their different strengths. For example, if you want to build an app on Android or an iOS device, well, you're not really going to use Python. But if you want to do machine learning, maybe you want to build a web server, maybe you want to do data visualizations, build scripts that process thousands of Excel files. Well, in that case, you're going to use Python. And we're going to cover what different things you can do with Python and what Python is really, really good at in this course as we explore different projects later on. But keep that in mind. The reason there are so many programming languages is that every programming language excels at some things and, well, doesn't do so well at others. It's all about trade-off. There is no ultimate language. And if a programmer tells you, hey, my language is the best language, they're probably junior developers that don't know what they're talking about. Everything is a pro and con. Everything has a trade-off. And as programmers, what really good senior programmers do is being able to detect what these pros and cons are and what tool to use for a specific problem. Something that throughout this course, I'm going to try and teach. I'll see you in the next one.